Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the brave men of the Continental Army. Our story is entitled, Line of Defense, the dramatic story of the defense of New York and the saving of an army that was destined to win America's independence. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Today, your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Does this description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, check with your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Line of Defense. <laughs> The winter of 1776 had solidified the American revolutionary movement. The streams of discontent that had their beginnings in the first rumblings of George III's oppression had now frozen into solid lines of resistance. Americans were aware of the cold facts that British sovereignty could no longer be reconciled with colonial liberty. A war had begun, and the action was only to be decided by a victory of arms. For the campaign to come, both sides made extensive preparations. The British decided to shift their field of action by early spring from Boston to New York City. From there, they planned to hold the line formed by the Hudson River in cooperation with a force that was to move down from Canada and thus effectually isolate New England. Across the East River from New York town lay Long Island and a sparsely populated area called Brookland. To get into Brookland, you had to first take a ferry from the foot of Fulton Street. What? Uh, Ward, oh, over here, over here. Uh, I tell you, General, it's inspiring. That man Tom Paine has this town in an uproar. My word. Oh, come, come, man. Catch your breath. We've plenty of time. Uh, the ferry's not to leave until Putnam comes. I'm sorry, sir. I was a bit overcome for the moment. Well, I hope this weather isn't getting the best of you, Colonel. <laughs> no, sir. It was just someone had posted a copy of Common Sense on the corner of Wall Street, which a crowd had gathered to read and cheer. Oh, a crowd gathered and in this weather, too. I couldn't push through the narrow street for the life of me. Well, it's a different world we're living in, Ward. We've come a long way from Lexington. Aye, General. We're a people aroused. Hey, listen to that. Oh, I think your crowd is catching up with you again. If I'm not mistaken, sir, that's General Putnam working his way through some enthusiastic admirers. Why, I believe you're right. Uh, over here, sir. Nathaniel, Colonel Ward, I had no idea I would have so distinguished a reception committee. Well, your message spoke of things of urgent moment, General. I thought it best. You're right, Nathaniel. Let's be aboard and done with them. Corporal, see that the horses are fed and well bedded. We're back to Philadelphia in the morning. The outgoing tide carried the ferry bearing the three men away from the Fulton Street slip and pushed it silently across the river to Brookland. Fresh mounts were waiting on the Long Island shore as the three braved the cold winds that blew down Wallabout Bay from the north. They headed up along the waters of the Gowanus to Fort Putnam, a bastion of the newly formed Army of the Continental Congress. A driving snow began to fall, and the three were hailed into the fort and about their business. Shake the weather from your boots, General. Come, warm yourself by the fire. Uh, 
That I will, Nathaniel. Now you, Ward, uh, hang your cape here. It'll dry quickly. Thank you, sir. Well, it's no wonder our British friends sit out the winter in Boston and Halifax. These winter winds are more destructive of armies than bullets and bayonets. You're right, Ward. But your men here look well cared for, Nathaniel. Aye, sir. But they champ at the bit for action. Well, they'll have it sooner than they wished for. Do you have a map of the northeast quarter, Nathaniel? Here, sir. There you are. Good for you. Our agent says that Howe and Burgoyne have reasoned that the seat of rebellion lies within the limits of, uh, of this quarter. Uh-huh. From New York town, roughly north and east to Quebec. They feel that if they can quash rebellion here, the rest of the colonies will submit with a minimum of resistance. Does the general know our situation here? The disbursement of trained troops is woefully thin. Washington knows it can only be a delaying action. Uh, let's see that map again, Nathaniel. No, uh, I sir. Hmm. Now, the only place that Howe could put his men ashore would be off Gravesend or New Utrecht here. Right, sir. Any further up the Narrows would put them in range of our cannon. Hmm. Yes, and then he'd probably follow the road to Flatbush across um, here. Yeah, and storm the heights across country to Brookland making the crossing into New York town. Aye, and our line of defense should lie somewhere about uh, here, on the heights. Can we hold them there? And you see the way Gowanus Creek lies in here, Mm -hmm. and the Wallabout Bay lies here, Uh, we can guard approximately three miles of the East River by a short defense line uh, where I've indicated them. Good. And that's the way it's to be done. Make your plans accordingly. Oh, uh, one thing more, Nathaniel. The householder who owns the property on the heights makes sure of his loyalty. It could be troublesome were he not friendly. Isaac! Isaac! Isaac von Fleet! You come down from behind there, I break every dish in the house over your head! Mathilde, please! Uh, Mathilde, please! No! You lazy. There will be no reading of these foolish papers when there is jobs to do. The ground is hard, Matilda. It cannot be worked. We do not work the ground. We fix door on new barn so cows can go in and out. I am richest farmer in all Brooklyn, Matilda. Why cannot hired man fix the door on my barn? Isaac, we will fix the barn now. You want to be poor Hollander like your father? No, Matilda, but there are important happenings in Boston and Philadelphia. The colonies will no longer pay allegiance to British kings. That is good. Yeah, and... there are important things in Brooklyn, too. Barn door is broken. Cows go in and out in the cold and freeze. No more milk. Ah, it's no use. This house, even the milk would sour turn. I go now fix the barn. Oh, my lands, Isaac, I'm not for company. Who you tell to come? I tell no one. We must answer the door. Who is there? Colonel Ward. I go change my dress. You answer the door, Isaac. I will be in the next room. Oh, Colonel Ward, come in. Come in out of the cold. Thank you. Ah, so long since I've been honored with your company. I have come with good reason, Isaac. Can I speak? Of course, Colonel, speak. Matilda has gone to change her dress. Well, uh, I won't take more than just a moment. Isaac, it appears now as if we'll see some action by spring. So? Yes. The British are mounting an army of nearly 30,000 men at Halifax, and they'll probably attack New York by summer. New York? Yes. The first battle will probably be fought right here in Long Island, in Brookland. But we have not enough troops to meet an army that size. We must build a line of defense here that will hold Howe's army long enough for us to be able to evacuate our small army to New York. Colonel, whatever help I can give, what can I do? The line of defense is to be here, on your property. Here? Yes. We plan to build battlements along the whole north ridge of your farm, along the heights. A defense line of a little more than a mile at that point can guard over three miles of the East River. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There's no other place in all of Brookland. I'm glad, Colonel, you come by me first. Isaac, why you do not tell me we have company? Oh, Matilda, you have never met Colonel Ward from the fort, Colonel... My wife, uh, Matilda. It's an honor, madam. <laughs> Did you not offer the colonel a cup of coffee, Isaac? Well, I can uh, only uh, say The a colonel moment, came about some clothes for the new army, Matilda. Uh, army's clothes? What silly business is this? Uh, madam, we fight for our freedom. It should be the concern of everyone. The war does not come to our farm. 
I care not if it is British king or American king who sits on throne. If the yoke of oppression is worn by one man, it's worn by all. <sighs> this is nonsense. Uh, I think, Colonel, we had better talk at another time. Hmm? Uh, yes, yes, I'd best be getting back to the fort. Uh, here, let me help you with your coat. Oh, thank you, Isaac. Yes, thank you. Um, about that other matter we discussed. Yes, Colonel. Matter? What other matter? Uh, well, uh, I... Uh, there's a fence, the fence. Uh, Colonel Ward is to send some men to build a fence. A fence? Where do we need a fence? On the heights, Matilda. Are you crazy, Isaac? It is our property on both sides of the heights. Why you need a fence? Matilda, I'm surprised with you. We have talked about fence many times. For windbreak, to, to build garden, to, to make pond. We need fence, Matilda. Well, I... And Colonel I... Ward has kindly offered to send over some of his men who have nothing to do to help build the fence for nothing. It will be beautiful fence, Matilda. Uh, your sure is for nothing. Oh, absolutely, Mrs. Van Fleet. Well, since it's for nothing, I cannot see where it will do harm. Good day, Colonel. I must now go about my work. Strange, I do not remember about the fence. Isaac, do not be long. We still have the barn door to fix. Yeah, Matilda, I'm coming. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, start your fence soon, Colonel. Like an army, when you have won a victory, never gives the enemy time to recover. Isaac, it is over a month that the soldiers are still working out on the heights. They're making a big fence. It's a big wind that sweeps in from the north, Matilda. Huh. All right, but do not leave the work interfere with your plowing. The ground will be broken, the seeds will be planted, the crops will grow. Isaac, the fence still goes on. When are these men through? When will this fence be finished and done with? It takes time, Matilda. One stone does not build a wall. I think this fence is no good. It's all we talk now. Fence, fence, fence. You go to the fort and tell Colonel that we do not need any more fence. The work is through. But, Matilda... Isaac, I, uh... the work is through. <laughs> Isaac, come in, come in. It's good to see you again, my friend. I'm glad to see you, Colonel Ward, but I come with bad news. Oh? Well, uh, maybe I can offset it with some good news, Isaac. Our line of defense is finished. Ah, good. Matilda could not much longer be fooled. Oh, and uh, one more thing, Isaac, yeah? if I may impose on you further. We're expecting a visitor from Philadelphia next week to inspect the fortifications. Ah, oh. Well, Matilda has a very nice sister in Yonkers town she has not seen in two years. Oh? Well, isn't it strange that we happen to have a coach going that way with some important dispatches, which just happens to have room for one more passenger? Ah, I think her sister gets very sick and has no one to take care of her <laughs> fine three children. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, my friend, how is it possible to measure your kindness? Ah. Well, here's a toast then, sir. To your visitor, to Yonkers. And to your visitor, from Philadelphia. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Line of Defense. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. You need only to glance at your local newspaper to realize how vital. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. And now, your Army and your Air Force bring you the second act of the proudly we hail production, Line of Defense. In the early spring of 1776, Colonel Ward, with a regiment numbering 519 men, all under the direction of General Nathaniel Green as engineer, was engaged in forming a line of defense which extended from the present Brooklyn Navy Yard gate, then on the wallabout, 
to Fort Green, then call Fort Putnam, and thence to the waters of the Gowanus at the present junction of Nevins and Baltic Streets in the borough of Brooklyn in the city of New York. On April 13, 1776, General George Washington arrived in New York town from Philadelphia. Newly appointed by the Continental Congress as General of all the armies, he had faith in a cause that he knew was just. And incidentally, he had a wall to inspect, a line of defense. It's fine, Israel, just fine. It will serve our purpose to the letter. I'm glad you're pleased, General. But come along, Israel. We must be getting back to the fort. Oh, one moment more, sir. That uh, house down the hill there. Yes, Israel? It belongs to an old friend of Colonel Ward's. His name is Van Vliet. Uh, this is his property on which we've built our fortifications. If I might suggest, sir, I think it would not be out of order were you to pay your respects. You're absolutely right, Israel. I only wish it were possible in such instances to reward these noble deeds with more than words. The day will come, General. The day will come. When I was a boy in Holland, General Washington, my father would take me on long walks, each time to a new place. Yet all the places were the same. I do not understand, Isaac. I beg your pardon, General. It is so difficult for me to express myself. Oh, go ahead, Van Vliet. Well, we went to one place where a farmer had died for the right to grow what he wanted. Another where William Pitt had preached when he came to Holland. Another where a religious man had been hanged for believing what he wanted to believe. You see, my father was a simple farmer, yet he knew in his heart that things could be better and he wanted me to know that life was not the most precious thing, uh, but living was. Yes. It's very obvious to us all that you believe in our principles very strongly. General, you must believe in something. <laughs> and so I always tell this to Matilda. Matilda? Oh, she's my wife, General. A good helpmate all these years in America. Yeah. Uh, but a very hard woman. By the way, Van Vliet, is that she coming? Where? Coming up over the crest of the hill there. Uh, yeah, that is her. Isn't it rather unusual for a woman to be traveling alone through the countryside? Not my Matilda. Oh? But, but she was to have been in Yonkers with her sister Jenny. She should not be here. I think we'd best be going, Isaac. Uh, no, 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 please stay, if, if only for a moment. Uh, and just remember, she knows nothing of the defense line. What's that? She thinks we have built fence for windbreak. Uh, Matilda knows nothing of war and soldiers. Well, I think you've complicated things unduly for yourself, Van Vliet. Uh, with your permission, General, I, I do not think you know my Matilda. Sometimes it is wiser to plant the new crops and to let the land lie fallow. Uh, I do not believe in telling untruths, but uh, Matilda has a busy mind and it needs something to work on. Isaac Van Vliet, uh, I will... Isaac... Who are these men? Uh, uh, gentlemen, this is my wife, Matilda. This is General George Washington and uh, General Putnam. How do you do? How do you do? do? Isaac, I would like to speak with you. Matilda, can you not offer company something? Isaac, I would like to speak with you. I'm afraid, Van Vliet, that we must be on our way. Must uh, you? General Washington has a meeting in New York this evening. Oh, goodbye, Van Vliet. I don't think anything further need be said. God be with you. Goodbye, Mrs. Van Vliet. It's been a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Goodbye, Isaac and Mrs. Van Vliet. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Isaac! Yeah, Matilda? Where are you going? I go out, cows to milk. It can wait. Why you tell me Jenny is sick and cannot take care of the children? I see Jenny by the Fulton Street Ferry. She has come to visit me. Why you tell me this? Why? 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 <laughs> it is very peaceful, Ward. For two months now, my Matilda says nothing to me. I think it best we have big arguments. She forgets about fence. Well, I'm afraid, Isaac, it's going to be a very rude awakening for her. Why is this, Colonel? The word is that the British fleet sailed from Halifax Harbor early this month. They'll be landing off Gravesend sometime around the middle of August. Ah, time goes so fast, Colonel. I cannot tell what happened to the springs this year. 
corn is almost waist high. Well, that's why I'm here, Isaac. Yes, the fortifications are to be occupied. Yes, we're moving in sometime early next week. We can't wait any longer. You're right. I cannot wait any longer, Esau. Matilda must know, and, well, she must know today. Now, Isaac, uh, perhaps if no, I... Speak... No, no, Colonel. It is my responsibility. The cart has pulled the horse for too long. Mm, I see. Isaac, I've meant to ask you for some time now. Uh, have you made any plans for your own evacuation when the British come? Evacuate? You mean uh, leave here? <laughs> Colonel, you're fooling. No, no, Isaac, I'm afraid I'm not. Your farm is going to be untenable territory in redcoat hands. But, Colonel, uh, <laughs> my life's blood feeds on these fields. I'm sorry, Isaac, I guess I shouldn't have asked. Besides, uh, what would the British want with a simple, innocent Hollander? Uh, no, Colonel, I think I stay right here in Brooklyn. I know you will come back. <laughs> Isaac, are you crazy? I do not wish to see the fence oh, now. Come, Matilda, you never get from the house uh. out. The first flowers are beginning to grow along the fence. You should see. Ah, I have little time for flowers when I'm making wheels of cheese in the kitchen. Ah, I look there now. Is this not something? Yeah. All right. Is something. Now I go back to cheese. You know, Matilda, it's like Holland. <sighs> Holland? Are you crazy? Yeah, it's like Holland. Look down to the cove, it's like canal. Ah, such nonsense. And look, flowers is yellow and red. If you close your eyes a little bit, like this, it's all tulips, like Holland. Isaac, I must go back to the cheese. And cows below could be Dutch cows. I think maybe next year I build windmill right here on the heights so it will be Holland here in Brooklyn. Yeah, this would be nice, Isaac. Holland, here in Brooklyn. You remember, Matilda? I remember, Isaac. No, but things are good here, too, Matilda. These past 20 years have been good to us. Isaac, the cheese will curdle. So we make a new batch. Mm, I wish it were easy to make new country like new batch cheese. Huh? What do you mean, Isaac? We work hard, Matilda, almost all our lives. Yeah? Whichever way you look, is our land, yours, mine. America has been good to us. We don't need Holland now, Matilda. Even so, we still love what we remember, yeah? Well, this is true, Isaac, but why are you telling me this? Matilda, we cannot leave them to take it away. Oh. Crazy man, what are you talking about? The British, Matilda, they will take it all the canals, the tulips, the wind. Ah, it's impossible. No, Matilda, it's real. Colonel Ward has told me the British land off Gravesend and New Utrecht before next month. They cannot do this. Can they, I say? They will take it all. They will land about 30,000 men at New Utrecht, march into Flatbush, and right up this hill to our house. But, but we cannot let them, I say. No, Matilda, no, we cannot let them. Yeah, but what can we do, Isaac? What can we do? What can we do? Oh. Ah, wait. Wait, I have an idea. Our fence will stop them. Our fence? Isaac, have you gone mad? No, no, I will go to the fort and talk with Colonel Ward. This wall will be perfect line of defense to stop the British if they try to cross the heights to New York town. And it must be done. Yeah. For once, Isaac, you are right. Absolutely right. It must be done. All right, easy there, easy. Those are cannon, not roast pig. Easy, easy there. The rest of you men don't stand there. Move lively. Play your hand here, that's it. All right, man, now up. Up, up, up. Good. Well done. <laughs> I'd like to see old General Howe's face when he looks into that one. <laughs> It'll blast him to kingdom come. The ships have been sighted, sir. There are five men of war. They've recognized the Phoenix and the Greyhound among them, so I take it this is to be the action we've waited for. And if I may say so, sir, we're ready for them. Colonel Ward. 
What's that woman doing in the line? She shouldn't be there. Yes, sir. Oh, there, Sergeant. That woman in the line. See that she gets evacuated to a rear position. Yes, sir, immediately, sir. Hold it, Sergeant. General. General, I, I, I can't believe my eyes. No, 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 it, 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 it can't be. What is it, Colonel? Speak up, man. With your permission, sir, I'd like to let that woman remain as long as she wishes. Why, yes, Colonel, of course, but why? One moment, sir. Sergeant, let that woman proceed as before. Sir, never in all my born days did I think I'd see this hour. That woman is Matilde Van Fleet pouring coffee for the men in the line. They're coming, sir. What they don't know is to be an empty victory for them. Sergeant, let's make that first salvo a furious one. They won't dare to mount these heights again. Easy, man. Hold your fire. Easy, man. Easy. Look at them march up the hill. That's the way those that can will march down. Now, men, up your muskets. That's the word down the line. Sergeant, ready. All right, men, let them have it. <laughs> As the victorious army of General Howe approached the line of defense on the afternoon of August 27, 1776, the imposing appearance of a well-planned fortification served to check the ardor of his troops, and the commanding general halted his assault and decided that only by slow approaches and counter-fortifications could he reduce the works. The progress of the British army, having been stopped by the fortifications, Sufficient time elapsed to enable Washington to retreat successfully across the East River with the entire forces under his command. The loss of this portion of the Continental Army in the early days of the Revolution would have been disastrous to the cause of the Americans, a loss that could not have been made good. Historians all agree that the line of defense was the main factor in saving the American Army from capture after the Battle of Long Island. Here's a special message for the young men of our country. The United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, is expanding rapidly and needs your help. By enlisting in the United States Army, you'll not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing a United States Army uniform. Why not get full details today? Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Enlist now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>